All right, we are moving on to lesson four, having to do with relating fractions to decimals. So again, our big idea is knowing what numbers means helps us to solve, sorry, helps us to compare things and solve problems. And today we're talking about how fractions and decimals are related, how they compare. So first of all, we're going to look at this uh, garden. What fraction of the garden is planted with each vegetable? Well, let's take a look. Uh, let's see, first we have radishes here. Hmm, okay, now part of this goes back to your grade four work where we have to combine some of our halves to make holes. So one, two, three, four, five, six complete holes, seven, eight. So eight out of, hmm, how many squares are there all together? Well, let's take a look and we can figure this out by out without counting all of them. We can just find the side measurements and from that we can figure it out using an array. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's ten by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If it's 10 by 10, well, 10 times 10 is 100. So that means our fraction would be 8 out of 100. And you would say this fraction as 8 hundredths. Well, when we think of decimal numbers, we also say 8 hundredths, but that means it looks like this. The 8 is in the hundredths place. If we remember, this is the tenths place, and this is the hundredths place. So this would be 8 hundredths. So they relate and they can mean the same amount, it's just talking about it in a different way. Uh, when we talk about fractions, this bottom number can be whatever we want it to be. But when we make it into a decimal number, it can't. It has to be out of tenths or it has to be out of hundredths. Now this whole <coughs> excuse me, grid is out of a hundred, so all of these fractions can be made into a decimal. So let's try another one. Let's see how many carrots there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So that would be twenty-four out of one hundred. As a decimal, that would be zero decimal twenty-four. The four has to be in the hundredths place, we would say this decimal as 24 hundredths. We would say this fraction as 24 hundredths. They're exactly the same. All right, we're going to leave this one for now. All right, we're going to take a look at our connect section. So we've got a flower garden here. And in this flower garden, we have roses, we have tulips, we have lilies, we have daisies. So 25 hundredths of this garden, if we look, one quarter of this garden, actually, if we divide it into equal fourths, one quarter of this garden is roses, which would be the same as 25 out of 100. If we were thinking of that, then we could say that this decimal is going to be 0 decimal 25 or 25 hundredths is how we would say that decimal. Or one fourth, and one fourth is this decimal. So this is exactly the same amount, it's just communicating it again in a slightly different way. If we continue, we can see that the tulips is three rows, which would make it also... No, that's not tulips. Sorry, that's my lilies. The tulips, here we go. These are the tulips. They're also 25 out of 100, or one-fourth of the garden. Here we're looking at the lilies, and there's three rows. Each row has 10, so that's 30 out of 100, or three-tenths. Um, we could use that as a decimal, but our decimal would be a little bit different. It would be 0 decimal 30, and then you would say 30 hundredths, or it could be zero decimal three, at which we place it would be three tenths because the three is in the tenths place. Whenever we say the name of a decimal, we say the name of the last spot 
that the last digit is in. So 30 hundredths or 3 tenths. And lastly, we have the daisies, and the daisies are only two rows, so that would be 20 out of 100 or 2 tenths, one row being um, one whole. So when we write fractions into decimals, very, very important that they have to have a denominator of 10 or a denominator of 100 because when we talk about our decimal places, this first place is the tenths place and this second place is the hundredths place. So in order for it to be written as a decimal, it has to end in the tenths place or it has to end in the hundredths place. That's as far as we go. Um, we will get to the thousandths later on, but for now it's up to the hundredths. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, here we have three tenths, which is said as three tenths, and it's written as three tenths, three in the tenths place. Notice this second dot here is just the period. It's not the decimal. You would just put zero decimal three. Uh, there's no second dot there. Okay, here we have 15 hundredths, 15 over 100, said as 15 hundredths, or exactly the same, said the exact same way, 15 hundredths. So really, when a person says, say, 5 tenths, we don't truly know, do they mean a decimal or do they mean a fraction? And in a way, it doesn't matter because they mean the same amount. Okay, it's still one item cut into five parts or cut into, or sorry, cut into ten parts with five shaded in. Doesn't make a difference. Lastly here we have 2500 said as 2500s written as 2500s as a decimal, zero decimal two five. Sometimes people when they're talking about decimals will say zero decimal two five and I think that's more because they want to confirm that it's a decimal they're talking about and not a fraction. Um, but the proper way to say that decimal number would be 25 hundredths. You don't even say the zero part, it's just 25 hundredths and it's hundredths because the five is in the hundredths place. Sometimes when we talk about money, we put money into a decimal place. Here we have four um, dimes, which would be four tenths of a dollar or 40 cents. Here we have three quarters of a dollar, which would be 75 cents. Money, we often write in decimals, but we sometimes will also say three quarters of a dollar or four tenths of a dollar. And then there's that direct connection again of what the decimal is for this particular fraction. So the decimal being zero decimal four zero for four tenths. And because it's money. It could, of course, also be 0.4, but then it's no longer money, so you have to be careful. When it's money, it always has to end in the hundredths place. Sometimes we have to take the fraction from its original form and put it into a fraction with the bottom number or the denominator of 10 or 100, and then we can write it as a decimal. So sometimes, even though it's originally not in a form that can be put into a, a decimal, we can make it into a form that can be put into a decimal. So for example, here if we had three-fifths and we were trying to make it into an equivalent fraction out of 10, or I guess it could be out of 100, but we'll go with 10, that's easier. And we already know with equivalent fractions, we have to look at what would we do to this number to get to this number. Well, I would have to multiply by 2. And what I do to the bottom, I also have to do to the top. So I'm going to multiply by 2. So it becomes 6 tenths. Well, now I can put it into a decimal. 0 decimal 6, because 6 is in the tenths place, that would be written, said as 6 tenths. They're exactly the same amount, which then also means that 3 fifths is equivalent to... 0 decimal 6. They mean the same amount. They are equal, equivalent. They mean the same amount. It's just a different way of saying it. Here we have 3 fourths, and now we're going into the hundredths. So again, we can look, make an equivalent fraction. We could say, okay, what do I have to multiply with 4 to make it 100? Well, I have to multiply 25. 
So what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 3 times 25 is 75, 75 hundredths. Well, now I can make that into a decimal. 0 decimal 75. Again, that means 3 fourths and 75 hundredths are equal. They are equivalent. They mean the same amount. It's just said in a different way. And you can see that right here with the picture. They mean the same amount. This is 3 fourths if you look at the big division. And if you look at them as divided differently into a hundred little pieces, then it's 75 hundredths. So again, same amount, just divided differently into different sized smaller pieces. Or same sized smaller pieces, different amounts. One last one to take a look at. Here we have 9 fiftieths, and we want to make it into hundredths. Um, I suppose we could try to make it into tenths, but we can't really make 9 into a smaller number, so we'd have to make it bigger. 9, um, or 50 times 2 would be the hundredth, so of course what we do to the bottom, we do to the top, so we have to times 2 as well. 9 times 2 is 18, so it would be 18 hundredths. 18 hundredths written as a decimal would look like this, and so that means then 9 fiftieths and 18 hundredths are equivalent. All right, now you're going to try some practice. Um, we're going to start with the first one. One box of pizza. The pizza is cut into eight pieces. In the second box, the pizza is cut into four pieces. And in the very last box, the pizza is cut into two pieces. And you can see the pictures here, two pieces, four pieces, eight, eight pieces, sorry. How many fourths of a pizza does it take to make one half of a pizza? So if we have here one half, how many fourths are we going to need? Go ahead and try that one. And then I'm going to read you B and C as well, and you can try both of those, and then once you've, or all three of those, and once you've done those, then we'll discuss them. So again, A, how many fourths of a pizza does it take to make one half? So how many fourths? How many eighths does it take to make one half? Are these fractions equivalent? And explain how you know. So the explain part, at least in words to your partner, turn and explain to them how do you know whether or not these are equivalent or whether or not they are not equivalent. Remember, we will not get better at explaining if we don't do it. So we have to explain, tell the words, use sentences to explain to your partner. Go ahead and press pause and try A, B, and C. All right, now that you've had an opportunity, A was how many fourths of a pizza does it take to make one half? And we are trying to find equivalent fractions there. If we look at this, one half, well one half when divided in fourths is actually two fourths. Or we could use equivalent fractions and say, okay, well what do I have to do to, to my two to get to, to four? And I'm dividing, or sorry, I'm multiplying by two. So I'm gonna multiply by two up here as well, and one times two is two. So two fourths is how many I would need for that. How many eighths does it take to make one half of a pizza? So how many eighths for one half? And again, I can look at one half, I can look at one half. How many fourths, how many eighths is it? I can see that there's four pieces there, it's four eighths. Or again, I can use equivalent fractions. What did I do to my two to get to eight? I multiplied by four. I'm gonna to have to multiply by four up here as well. One times four is four. And they are equivalent fractions because we can even see that in the picture. They are all the same amount of pizza. It's just that the pizza is divided differently. So are these equivalent fractions? Yes. How do I know? Because they all mean the same amount. And I can see that right in my picture. One half, two fourths, four eighths are all the same amount of the pizza. They are all half of the pizza. All right, we're going to continue with some more practice. You're going to work on question number three. Um, and then we're going to work on A, B, C, and D as well. So number three, I will read the question to you. You will do A, um, and then you will also do A, B, C, and D. So there's two A's there. I know that happens sometimes because I'm taking it from lots of different books and different um, things. So you have a chocolate bar. Your friend wants half of the chocolate bar. Your friend wants you to give him six pieces. Think about the number of pieces you're going to break the whole chocolate bar into so that he ends up with six pieces and it's still 
half. How many pieces will you break the whole chocolate bar into? So six pieces will be half of the chocolate bar. Go ahead, press pause and try that now. All right, so six pieces total is what we want, or is six pieces not in total, but we need to know what the total is. Six pieces is what we want to give him, and that's going to be half of the chocolate bar. So that's really an equivalent fraction. What would we do with the one to get to the six? Well, I'm multiplying by six. Two times six then is 12. So I would break my chocolate bar my whole chocolate bar into 12 pieces and give him six of them. Then he would still get half of it. It's equivalent fraction. Perfect. All right, now you're doing the second portion. Write each fraction as a decimal. So we're relating those fractions. Write each fraction as a decimal number. Go ahead and press pause. Um, remember, for it to be a decimal number, it has to be out of tenths or out of a hundredths. So you're trying to create equivalent fractions out of tenths and hundredths. That's my hint to you today. Uh, press pause and try these on your paper. All right, so I'm going to start with a half. And I want to make it into a decimal number. So remember, a decimal number has to be out of 10 or out of 100. I'm going to go with 10. I find that easier. What am I going to do with the 2 to get to the 10? Well, I have to multiply by 5. What I do to the top, I do to the bottom, so 5. So 5 tenths is my fraction. Hmm, what does that look like as a decimal? As a decimal, that would be 0 decimal 5, because then my 5 is in the tenths place. So that would be the decimal that you would get. All right, let's try 7 25ths as a fraction, or sorry, as a decimal. And again, it has to be out of 10 or out of 100. Uh, 10 is going to be tricky, 100 is going to be a bit easier, I'm going to try 100. Uh, 25 times what equals 100? Hmm, it's getting bigger, think of quarters, 25 cents to make a dollar, which would be 100 cents, I would multiply by 4, so I'm going to multiply by 4, what I do to the top, to the bottom, sorry, I have to do to the top, 7 times 4 is 28. Hmm, now to write that as a decimal number, 28 hundredths. Well, that means my last digit has to be in the hundredth place. So eight here, two here. I need a zero before my decimal. That would be my decimal number, zero, 28 hundredths, okay? Or just 28 hundredths, zero and 28 hundredths. Either would be all right. All right, next one, nine tenths. Ooh, easy one. It's already in a decimal, sorry, in a fraction out of 10. So I can write it directly into a decimal, nine tenths. Hmm, that would mean I would have decimal. I want my number to end in the tenths place, and my number is a nine. I have to put a zero in front. This would be my decimal number, zero decimal nine, nine tenths. Perfect. Last one. All right, three fifths this time. Well, it's not out of tenths or hundredths, so I need to make it out of tenths or hundredths. Uh, five, easy to make five into ten. I'm going to go with ten. Five to what? To get to ten, I'd multiply by two. So what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Three times two would be six. Six tenths. Okay, writing that as a decimal, that means I would have to have my number in the tenths place, and it is a six. So I put a zero in front. Zero decimal six. Six tenths. And you do have to put that zero in front. Sometimes people write decimals as the decimal and then that number. That's not accurate. That's not mathematically correct. That's not mathematically sound. Has to have that zero in front. All right, now we are moving on to concept practice. We are looking at page 179, numbers 4, 5, and 9, and we are relating fractions and decimals. In case you've forgotten your textbook, here are your questions from the textbook. You may press pause and try these. And here's your next page from the textbook, in case you've forgotten. And your last page of the textbook, in case you've forgotten. Uh, reflect section 2. Good idea to do the reflect section. Write fractions. You can e Which fractions can you easily write as decimals? Why? Use examples in your explanations. I like that one. So hopefully you've done all of the questions. If you have any worries or any uh, things that you're unsure about as you go, please make sure that you ask.